how is everyone? What am I working on? Where am I working? Oh, right there. That's about, that's about right. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Let me get to my seat here. Get settled. But now that I'm here, do I like the angle? Eh, it's all right. It's okay. Ah, oh, hey, my video is playing an ad currently. Hey, we're making some money. <laughs> all right, skip the ad. No, do I want to join? Do I want to join? No. Jam to Coachella's finest, ad free. What? Bring your favorite festival artist home with two months of music. Hmm, no thanks. <laughs> so always something popping up, I swear. Always, always. How is everyone? I'm cold. <laughs> I will just say I'm cold. Yep. It is not warm here today. It is 40. 40 something. It's cold. Okay. So yeah, I just turned the furnace up. I'm like, okay, let's turn up some heat. Let's turn up some heat because I'm freezing. Anyhow. All right. Let's get some drills in our tray. And let's get ready to rock and roll here. I really, really want to finish this little B section right here, which is, I don't know, not quite half done. Because that finishes two rows. I'm not halfway yet. I'm, I'm so far behind. I am so far behind. But hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday Night Shenanigans. <laughs> hello, John and Amy and Dawn. Hello, Leona. Hello, Joyce and Sean. And Dawn, the other Dawn is here. Hello, Shannon. And Sherry and Michelle's here. Hi. Um, Kathy's here. How is everyone doing on your event canvas? Good question, Amy. I just told you how I'm doing on mine. I am not even halfway. So, yeah. Hey, Sue and Catherine. Catherine, you're working on a, a crochet project. Uh, Tony's Adventurous Scarf, is that correct? Um, Patty and Tina, hello. Rainy and 50 in North Texas. Well, yeah, it's only 40 something here. It's supposed to be nicer tomorrow though. It's supposed to be nicer tomorrow. Hello, Emma and Linda. Um, who else is here? Brenda's here. Yeah, Catherine, I saw your picture of that adventurous scarf. Um, you know, that's what I'm working on. You're a lot farther than me, but mine's wider. I made mine quite a bit wider than um, yours is. So, yeah. Um, it's fun, though. It's fun. I will give it that. It's a very interesting concept how you make that shawl. Um, and. It, it takes a while to figure out what what's happening. What's happening with it? <laughs> Anyhow, it's coming along. It is coming along. So yours looks really pretty, though. It does. It looks really pretty. I liked it. Um, I liked I liked your picture when I saw it. So yeah. Okay. I'm I've turned this whole thing a different direction. And I'm not going to be happy with it because most of these lines are going, um, well, when you have it turned the correct way, they're vertical. But now that I've turned the whole painting around, now they're horizontal. And I don't prefer going horizontal. I would have preferred going vertical. Oh, so yours is smaller. Okay. I wondered because that's how you had, you had like a long one section of one color. I thought, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. 46 in Illinois. Yeah, it might have hit 44 here today. Maybe. Yeah, not warm. Not warm at all. But they said Dale just got done watching the weather, you know. And it said that tomorrow is going to be a much more pleasant day around here, which I'm happy to hear because, you know, Angie and I, 
we're going to a fiber festival tomorrow. So having it be a little nicer than it is today will be great. So I don't know what the temperature is going to be, but they just said it's going to be much nicer. Sun will be shining. The wind, the wind is blowing. It's cold when that wind comes whipping around. That's the worst part. It's super cold. But um, yeah, I did get out to the greenhouse when I got home today. Headed out to the greenhouse to see how things are faring out there and if I've had any uh, critters, critters in the greenhouse. And everything looks okay. Everything is looking good. So, fingers crossed. Um, I'm supposed to start uncovering the little seedlings. When they start to pop up out of the dirt, we're supposed to be able to take the cover off and not leave the cover on. Uh, yeah. But I'm afraid to do that. <laughs> I'm afraid to do that. Oh, you're using just two different full skein colors? Okay. Well, I thought I was going to be really slick with mine. And I was going to go matchy, matchy with mine. Like, I went from a uh, yellowy yarn to one with yellow and orange to another orange tonal. And right now, they're so similar. At least the two yarns I'm working with right now are so similar, I'm not really getting a whole lot of striping effect because it's supposed to like stripe. I'm not getting much striping because my yarn colors, the two I'm working with right now, are so similar. It just kind of looks like one big thing of orange. <laughs> it started out looking cool with my first two colors, but then when I ran out of the first, the first color and added a third, it just started to look kind of same old, same old. It will change. I know it'll change. And I thought it would be cool to have it all like a, a fade sort of, you know, like similar colors, follow similar colors and whatnot. I don't know. When I went to the class with Tony and she said, you know, you don't have to do that. She said, you can just grab us any color out of your advent. She said, and just let it flow because it always looks pretty no matter what. And I'm sure that it would, but in my brain, I'm just like, I need them to coordinate as they go from one to the other. <laughs> so I don't know. It's still pretty, no matter what, it's still pretty. And it's getting bigger. I mean, it's getting quite big. But, oh, look what I just did. I pushed, I tried to scooch, and I scooched them right out of place and they went boom all over the place i will say when you have a canvas where your drills fit nice and snug like this one you got to make sure they're right in their squares or you're going to end up with a little problem anyhow um hi joe hello paula i know right the critter in my trees i know right I'm telling you, I was like, oh, are you kidding? Uh, I know, Shannon, I need to take the cover off, but I'm afraid when I take the covers off, the mice will get them. As there's been little critters out there. Anyhow, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. You know what I mean? And they're just popping up. They're just starting to pop up. In almost every tray. I think there's one tray, I, the dahlias. I don't see dahlia seeds yet or little seedlings. I haven't seen them yet, but I think all of my other trays have some little, little green sprouts popping out. And I know I need to uncover them, but I don't want anything to eat them. What do I do? Do I uncover them and take the chance? I mean, I don't want to do that. I'm scared. Um, I haven't seen evidence of a critter in a few days. I mean, like I said, 
we got out there and we have redone everything and just put more screws filled little tiny itty bitty holes with you know this foamy stuff that you put in there it's not like a spray foam it's like strips of foam that fit in there and i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do yeah that's why shannon i don't want critters to get in there and eat them i'm afraid that if i take the covers off it'll be like hey the snack bar is open <laughs> you know i don't know but like i said i haven't seen evidence of critters getting in them in the last few days so i don't know i just don't know what to do i mean it's kind of a pity to have this wonderful beautiful greenhouse that you're supposed to be able to start and grow plants in right and you have something that can get in there and destroy it all it's just like ugh. so the mouse traps haven't been touched haven't been moved there's one little block of mouse poison in there that hasn't been moved or touched in several days i've clamped down on the tray lids with rocks and i mean i've done everything i can to protect those little seeds and now that they're starting to grow and be little plants i certainly don't want them to get eaten now i don't know that every single one's going to come up either because i think they did dig up some i know i was thinking of that patty and so here was my thought Nothing in the traps, no. Nope. My thought was, one of the trays has just some, <clears throat> like more common seeds, you know, like you can buy at the store and at Walmart. I'm thinking of experimenting with that one. Now that one doesn't have as many little sprouts as the nice expensive seeds do. The zinnias oh my gosh i was so surprised how quickly these zinnias sprouted i mean i was like whoa i have seedlings i have little little plants growing already in spite of them getting dug in and everything they're still out there growing so i don't know that the mice got the seeds you know what i mean and i don't know and i'm i'm just assuming it's mouse um, because that's the only thing, only thing I can think of that could have possibly gotten in there. Anything else would have been way too big and wouldn't have been able to get in. There's just small, small little gaps that we're filling up, you guys, with this, these pieces of foam. But, um, what was I saying? I'm thinking I might experiment with the tray of like the store-bought seeds now i'm gonna have to do it pretty quick and just try one night you know <sighs> maybe tomorrow i don't know we'll see but i know i've got to get the lids off so they can start growing i did just post a comment on one of um florette's you know uh, Instagram reels. She's always doing videos on Instagram and they're quite lengthy. I mean, she gets right down and dirty and shows you a lot, um, gives you some great advice and stuff. So I posted a comment there about any advice on what to do about rodent slash mice in the greenhouse. <laughs> so we'll see. That's what I'm going to try. Hi, April. Um, chipmunk, maybe, but chipmunks are bigger than the mice. And I honestly don't think a chipmunk could get in the little tiny, tiny holes that we found. I mean, we're talking, these holes are tiny, tiny, tiny. <sighs> but we'll see. I'm, I think I'm going to experiment with the with the tray with the cheaper seeds in it. 
but I mean, like I said, the zinnias are the ones that are really taken off and growing really well. And they're the ones that are going to need the lid off sooner than the others. But we'll, we'll, we'll go with the cheap ones and see what happens. <laughs> Let's give the cheap ones. We'll let them be the guinea pig and see what happens. You know? And I still have more of those. Um, I did not use up all of those in those packets. I do have, I think, I have three varieties of the zinnias. I did plant all of one. One type, I planted every seed there was. And the other two, I have some left over. So I could replant some, you know. Once I feel that it's safe and secure out there, I could replant. So we'll see how it goes. We shall see. Um, anyhow, the sale today. Oh, Sue, the sale. Are we calling it that? I don't, I don't think we call it a craft sale. I don't think. So first of all, let me just say, this is a fairly new craft sale in general. Like they have done two fall sales for two years. They did it in the fall. And that's the first time they've ever done it. Okay. So, I mean, I went to both of them both times and they seemed to be you know, they had a lot of vendors. They seem to be fairly well attended. Okay. All good things, right? I mean, I didn't participate as a vendor either time, but they seem to be, you know, it seemed to be pretty good. Well, this is the first time they have done anything in the spring. He was going to do it in the spring after the first fall sale that they did, and they didn't. I don't know why, but they didn't. So this is the first time they have done a sale in the spring. Let's just say that. First off, let's just go with that. <laughs> All right. So we could go set up last night on Friday, which we did. Took advantage of that. Got there. Set up. I have video of it and stuff like that, which will be in like the next crafty vlog. If you can see it there, but um, we got set up last night, and I don't have a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't have a ton of merchandise, you know. But um, I had one one table like. You know those tables you can get at Walmart, or they're those white tables. I don't even know how long they are. Are they six foot, five foot, or something like that? Okay. So I had that, and I have this screen. It looks like wicker, but it's not. It's just a cheap plastic screen. I think we got it Ollie's maybe or someplace like that. And I have hooks where I can hang diamond paintings on this screen. Now, the screen, let me just say, it is not the most uh, sturdy. I am always nervous with the thing. I've had it outside and it's blown around and things have fallen off it, you know, just anyhow. So that's all I really had was this table and this screen, right? Well, first of all, it was confusing when we got there how the whole thing is set up because there weren't a ton of people set up around my spot when I was there. And I was like, how does this even go? What direction does this go? Does it, you know, where's the aisles? I needed to go get one of the organizers to come in and be like, where is my space exactly? And they had tape on the floor and a piece of paper on the floor with the number. But that didn't help figure out 
which direction? Where, where's the traffic flow? Where are the aisles? How are people coming and going here? You know? So finally, some lady that was helping, she was setting up and she just came over. And she says, okay, let me show you how this works. Okay. <laughs> it would blow away in a wind. It would. <laughs> um, so I'm moving along. Brenda, I'm not going that fast. I'm not even halfway, Brenda. I got a long way to go yet. <laughs> um, so she came in and she was talking to the guy who he was kind of like clueless, like he didn't know. And she's like, no, this is an aisle. This is going to be the main aisle. They're going to walk down. They're going to come through this way. I'm like, oh, okay. I thought it was going the other way, you know? So basically I should turn everything completely opposite of what I thought I was going to do and face it this way. And she goes, yeah, they're going to come through this way. I'm like, okay, okay. So we got it all set up anyhow. And Dale just took charge of the screen and the paintings. So he started putting the little hooks on the paintings and hanging them on the screen. And he just was working away, working away, working away. And I'm like, okay. And I went to the table to start putting all the little Diamond painting trinkety things, you know? So, you know, the wooden crates, the wooden crates that we have sold so many of. Dale has managed to get six, okay? And six was a nice little number. And he had a way of setting them up, which I didn't think about. But the way he put them on the table, I was like, oh, well, that works great. And it gave me more room to put more things. So it kind of like, it increased my space on my table because now I can go up, right? So I could put stuff in the crate and then I could put stuff on the crate on top of it and I could put stuff on top of the crate, you know? So it was just like, go up, as they say, go up. You know, if you run out of room, there's always up. So that worked. And I was able to fit a lot of stuff in there. I have... It actually all fits in one box, which is weird. I mean, I've got like, I've got, um, ah, yes, Jenny, Jenny's here. Yes, less than two weeks. We'll get to see each other. Yay. <laughs> um, so all the stuff that I have that I take fits in this one box. And I've got like, hanging things. I have little lights, you know, little things that light up. I have, I mean, I've got just all kinds of stuff. Well, got it all set up. And then I was taking a selection of crochet. And if you guys don't know, yesterday during the crochet live, we had a pricing episode. That's what we did. <laughs> so I had, I don't know, I had two tops. I had a shawl. I had a Mm, bag, a crocheted bag. I can't remember. There's a couple other things probably. But I was like, okay, I, I got questions. You guys all crochet. Well, the people that were there yesterday, not all of them do, but they know about they know about crafty things. I'm like, okay, what would you sell these things for? Angie didn't want to participate. She's like, I don't want to, I don't want to participate. And I'm like, why? She goes, I just, well, I don't want to say something like maybe I give a price that is lower than you thought. I don't want it to sound offensive or I'm like, oh, don't worry about that. Turns out the prices that I had on things was way lower than the people in the live were saying. So I changed my tags. The, the towel spa set, that was one. Yep. A pair of, I had a pair of flip flops. I took the flip flops. <laughs> um. So I said, well, okay, I'll go with what you guys are kind of saying. So I changed tags and I raised my prices. I didn't sell one crocheted item, not one. I didn't even really have anybody look at it. So because of my table space, I came home and I got this little table, this little table right here, which is only about, I mean, how wide is this? 30 inches, maybe 30 inches by, I don't know, 
15, maybe. It's small. Okay. Hello, Deborah. So, hello, Karen. Came home and got this and a couple other things. Got a chair. I needed a chair and went back. And I used this little table right here to put like crocheted things on. And the things that I could hang, like the two tops, the two tops, the shawl, and the crochet bag, I put on hangers. And I had them hanging off the sides of the crates on the table so you could see them. All right, come home. Uh, I'll, we're all done. Okay. So I got there this morning and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So someone had moved in right beside me and they were selling children's books. But that blocked everything I had on that side of my table, pretty much, where I had the um, crocheted items hanging and stuff. Nobody could even get to them. Um, somebody moved in right behind me and I had no space behind me where I thought people were going to be able to walk around the screen, you know, because Dale had some paintings on the back side as well. Well, that didn't work. Okay, so I did some rearranging. And then the people behind me had their granddaughter. And the whole day, I was so worried about this little girl. Because she's literally laying on the floor right behind my screen and playing. And they had a Rubbermaid tote there. And that was her table for lunch. She did kick two paintings over that were leaning on the floor. She kicked two of them over. They didn't break or anything. And then she, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And, you know, the interesting was the grandparents weren't really, like, cognizant of the issue that, you know, they did say at one point, why don't you scooch up this way a little bit, you know, something like that. But did they move her? They could have moved her all the way up closer to the front of their table instead of right there, right by my screen, which, you know, I'm already worried about it going to fall over, you know. Anyhow, it was interesting. There weren't very many people there. There just weren't very many people there. There was a time when there was no customers in this entire room. We were in the gym or so. I think we were in the gym. And there was not one customer. It was just us, the vendors. There was nobody there. So it was really slow. It was real slow. Um, yeah, what's wrong with people? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I did have like, I had somebody look at the bag pretty hard. And in my life, in my life, people said I could sell the crochet bag for $30. So I had had like 20 bucks on it. I changed my price and I made my price tag 30. And, you know, about halfway through the whole thing, I thought, well, let me just put them back down. You know, let me lower the prices back down and see if anybody looks at them and, and they're interested. But it was like nobody was really looking. Uh, and I don't know what they were there. I don't know what they were buying. Like, what were they actually purchasing at the craft sale? I don't know. I mean, I couldn't walk around and see what everybody was buying or anything. What were people interested in? Don't know. But anyhow, the lady beside me that was selling the books, she was like, I've never been at a show that's been this slow. She said, I haven't made my money back. I was like, neither have I. <laughs> you know, now at about two o'clock, it got a little busy. The show only went until three. About two o'clock, it got kind of busy. It was like, it must have been like that last minute rush. Oh, we got to get there. It's over at three. We got to go. So they all came, right? <laughs> so they all came. And for about 20 minutes, it was kind of busy. Anyhow, um, she ended up selling a few books there at the end. She must have done a little bit of business there at the end. I, okay, here's what I sold. Are you ready? It's really... <laughs> It's really kind of pathetic, but this is, this is the story. This is what happened. This is what I sold. Oh, you know what? 
I can do this color, but I'm going to run out of that color. I mean, I'm not running out. I have more over there, but I don't feel like interrupting to go get them. You know what I mean? So let's just do a different color. Let's do a different color. Let's go to a whole different sleeve here. Oh, we'll do these greens. We can do that. Um, so it was the first year for the spring craft sale. Right. And it was cold. And maybe that was a big part of it. It just was, it was 40 some degrees, 42, 43. Um, yeah, there were people walking around with purchases for sure. But, you know, I don't know what they were buying. But um, there was a lady selling $5 jewelry behind me. She was selling some stuff. Um, probably not Karen because it was just in little Potterville. There's nothing else in Potterville. So, and I don't know. It, I don't know. A lot, of, um, a lot of things play into it, I suppose, right? But I had one lady come up and she liked these butterfly stickers. Remember, I had a set of like four butterfly stickers. They were like larger stickers. And she really loved this butterfly sticker. And I sold the sticker for $2, two bucks, okay? So she bought a butterfly sticker. All right. Well, she came back a little while later and she had a friend with her at that point. And she was showing her friend these stickers and trying to talk her friend into getting some stickers. I had four of them. Well, her friend thought about it and thought about it. And she's like, well, I think I need to go peruse first and see what all there is. I'm like, okay, great. Well, while they were there, the other lady bought, the same lady, the same lady bought a journal. I had a dragonfly on it. So that was $8. I sold a journal, $8. One sticker, $2. That's $10 for the same person. Okay. <laughs> and then it was just, there was nothing, nothing. A lot of people come by and they look at it and they're like, oh, that's really pretty. Those are so pretty. Other people like, oh, I've heard of that. I could never do that. You know, my eyes would go across this and that and the next thing. A lot of people talk to you about the diamond painting stuff, but nobody's buying anything, right? Nobody's buying anything. All right. Well. In that late, you know, two o'clock rush there that we had, and I'm, I'm talking the two o'clock rush. There was probably ten groups of people that were there, no more than that. Hello, Karen. Um, so one lady comes up, and she's like, "Is there any way you could uh, do change for a hundred dollar bill?" And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Let me go look. And Dale was there. And I said, and I'll ask him, I'll ask my husband too. He might have some money. So she kind of, she said, okay. And then she kind of walked away. And I went and I asked Dale and he's like, yeah, I can change a hundred. I'm like, okay. And then I turned around, I'm like, where'd the lady go? Right. Well, she was just the next booth over or so. So I just walked over there and I said, yeah, we can do that. And she's like, oh, okay. So I really like that cat painting. I'm like, all right. So keep in mind, you guys, it's a special drill painting. Um, I name buddy. That's cute. <laughs> name buddy. <laughs> um, so it's a special drill cat. It's blue, like that blue China looking, you know, kind of feel. And it's in a frame. It wasn't an expensive frame, but it wasn't like a super cheap frame either. $15. I sold for $15, <laughs> right? So that was it. That was all my sales, $27, 27 bucks. Yeah. For about uh, six and a half hours of work, set up, tear down, all that kind of stuff. $27. And I, I don't remember what I paid. It was either 20 or 30. So I either barely made my money back or I didn't quite make my money back. I don't remember. <laughs> I got to look it up and see how much did I pay for the space? I don't remember. Anyhow, 
that was the craft sale. <laughs> that was it. You know, you live and you learn. And I don't know. I just don't know if it's the wrong clientele, the wrong time of year, the wrong. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is it that they just don't like it? They don't want to buy it. Nobody's going to buy diamond painting. I don't know. Anyhow, no idea. So it is what it is. You know, you try. That's all you do. You go, you try. Did it, did it hurt me in any way? No. I mean, what, what did I give up? I gave up a few hours of my time, you know, and um, I bought a couple things while I was there. <laughs> of course, I bought a couple of things while I was there. There was a guy there and he was, um, I should have brought it in here. It's out on the kitchen table. He was um, doing 3D printing and he had all the cool, like movable things. You know, you've seen, I know you've seen people that are selling like these dragons, you know, they, and you can wiggle them and the tail snakes back and forth and stuff. He had a bunch of those. Um, oh, I don't think it was a fake hundred, Sue. <laughs> Anyhow, um, not the right crowd. Yeah, it could be. Very well, could be. Could be the weather, the crowd, the whatever. Yeah. I could have been home crocheting April or something. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> Maybe a, that's a good idea too, Brenda. A larger a larger venue, a more well-known craft sale, right? Um, so I've done a few little craft sales. I think. Okay, let me think. First one I did was out in Charlotte, at like the VFW or the Eagles or someplace like that. And that one was really small, really small, and really not advertised at all. But I sold a few things there. I mean, I made my money back there. The other thing I tried was there's like a flea market type thing in a parking lot in front of an antique store. And they do that in the summer. And I went there one time and I think it only cost $20. And I made like, I sold like 30 or 35 or something. So I sold some stuff, made my money back at both of those places, right? And then probably the best one I ever did was in the summer. Um, and it was out in Holt, which is where I went to school. Um, and it was in a park. And it was a really nice day until it rained. <laughs> but I did okay there. And I always joke with Dale that he was there. And I went to walk around with my sister, you know, to see the other vendors. I came back and Dale had sold like two things. I was like, okay, I'll just keep walking around, you know, but I did okay at that one too. I mean, nothing great. We're not talking about hundreds of dollars here. We're talking about, I mean, I might've made 50 or $60 at that one. That was the best I'd ever done. And that's all just diamond painting stuff. I had nothing but diamond painting stuff at any of those. So anyhow, I don't know. It is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is. But, you know, I bought, oh, the 3D item. It's so cute. It is a sheep. It's a little lamb. It's adorable. I'll just show it to you in a video or something because I'm not going to go get it right now. But it's adorable. Absolutely adorable. The little sheep can either stand or he can like spread his legs out and looks like he's laying down. He's so cute. <laughs> so I was thinking cute. I had to get him. He was only five bucks. <laughs> well, but anyhow, that's how the day went. That is how my day went. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to think about I'm going to think about this. Am I going to try this again? And if I try it again, where will I try it again? You know, is it a matter of picking the right place? Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I heard one lady say um, she had a younger person with her. And the younger person was really kind of interested in a couple things. I think she was looking at a keychain and something else. And the other lady was like, oh, my daughter does that. I wouldn't pay to buy it. Oh, okay. All right. I, I get it. <laughs> you know, I get it. Okay. If it's something you can do yourself, you know, or your daughter can do it, I, I more power to you, you know. But there's a whole market out there, and you know there is, of people who like it, who are fascinated by it, who think it's really pretty and like it a lot, but would never do it themselves. You know, they would never do it themselves. And those are the people that I'm trying to reach. Hello, Diamond Queen. Yeah, it was slow, but... That in East Lansing that I videoed. What did I video in East Lansing? A craft show? I don't I don't remember. I don't remember that. A school bazaar. I don't even know about any school bazaars. I've never even heard of any school. Yeah, it was a little rude, Shannon. You're right. <laughs> Anyhow, whatever. Mm -hmm. Go get your daughter to make you some stuff then, you know. <laughs> and somebody else was, you know, they were like, well, I do some diamond painting, but where do you get all this other stuff? Because, you know, she's only buying stuff at, like, you know, the craft stores and getting just paintings where you can't find keychains and bookmarks and coasters you know so she was like oh but yeah you have to order it online i get it from all over the place you know but that's the day that's how it went not so great <laughs> but anyhow i'll have to do more investigation next time and i think if i'm gonna do crochet i don't know i, I don't know if you have to present it differently, presenting it differently would help for sure. Having a better way to display it, things that hang or um, more space for it, maybe things like that. Um, and and where's a good choice? Where Where's the right place to go to try to sell it? Maybe that makes all the difference. I don't know. I just don't know. I'll probably do a few more, but it's nothing I'm going to, you know, like try to do very often. Yeah. I mean, it is work for sure. Lugging your stuff around, you know, even though I didn't have a lot of stuff. And some of these people, oh my goodness, do they have elaborate elaborate setups multiple tables things that go on top of their tables racking and stands and this and that and the next thing they have so much stuff you know um there was one lady there and i know her she did not remember me but i know who she is <laughs> um and she was selling like dog items like she makes dog beds and bandanas and kitty toys and it must be her husband i think makes these wooden stands for dog bowls and food bowls they must have had three spaces over in the one corner so they must have paid for three spots as much stuff as they had and they had so much stuff I can't even imagine how long it took them to set all that up. I'm trying to get out this one drill. It's got a little nubby on it. Come on, get out of there. Um, I can't imagine how long it took to set up. It must have taken absolutely hours, you know? And some of these people come, they have their own little carts and their own little wagons. And it's like, 
you know, you can tell the people who've done this multiple times. So school bazaars are all over the Grand Rapids area in the fall. Really? Wow. Yeah, I don't really hear about that. And how do you get into those? Do you have to have children in the school district? I mean, what? I don't know. Oh, I'm working on a Francesca Studio Works Diamond Queen. It's called When the Mice or When the Kittens Are Away, the Mice Will Play. It looks like this. Looks like this. It's super cute. You heard of Francesca Studio Works? Really, really nice stuff. Really, really nice. So, yeah. Um, an art show. I showed an art show in East Lansing? Or I should go to an art show? What are you saying? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hi, Marion. Oh, you leave tomorrow morning. Oh, have fun on your travels. Have fun on your travels. Um, right? I know, Deborah. <laughs> I did tell a couple people I had a channel. I didn't tell everybody that. I mean, sometimes it just didn't like come up in conversation. You know what I'm saying? But anyhow, and it's not like I talked to a ton of people. I mean, I didn't talk to a lot of people today. You know, you try to talk to people and build rapport and, you know, like if somebody actually stopped, and most people don't even stop. That's the thing. They didn't even stop at the table. They would just glance over and keep going. I'm like, oh, they're not interested. But if they did stop, then I would just get up and I would walk right around to the front of the table, you know, and see what they were looking at. Because I couldn't see it from the back side because, you know, it's in the crates. All I was seeing was the back side. But I'd get up and I'd go over there and I'd, you know, oh, yeah, those are stickers. Um, da, 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 you know, and talk to them about it, what they were, the items they were looking at and stuff. But, yeah, anyhow, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. I don't hate it. I mean, I don't hate the fact that I went and did it. I mean, you know, I would have liked to have had a little more success, but it's all right. It's all right. Google craft fairs near me. I've done that, Karen. <laughs> I have done that. Um, and I think, honestly, there are there are a few really good, like, summer ones you know if you get into a good summer craft fair craft sale um fall is really the big time for craft craft sales craft shows you know before christmas people are buying all kinds of stuff they're looking for gifts and whatnot but um i might try a summertime one maybe maybe that one um I told you about that was out in Holt at the park. That was a good one. It was nice there too. It was a nice park. Um, they take anybody who will pay the entry fee. Huh. So what kind of crochet items are your friends selling, Amy? I'm curious about that. Um, the guy did tell me, remember, if you remember the story, when I went to sign up for it, he emailed me back and said, oh, I'm sorry. We already have somebody coming with diamond painting. I was, and we only want to have one of, you know, we don't want to duplicate things. And I was like, okay, all right. But, you know, there's different kinds of crochet. We all know that, right? Like, and he said, when I said I also do crochet, and he said, well, I have somebody bringing crochet as well. Well, I found. There was one lady there and she was doing plushies and she had about 10. <laughs> she literally had about 10 plushies on her table. That was it. Now, did she sell some? Yes, she did. She sold some. Um, I don't know how many she sold. I, I saw her sell one. Let me just say that. I saw her sell one. So one person walk away with one. I don't know how many she sold. Hello, Samantha. Um, but 
that was the crochet person, apparently. However, there's other people that do, um, I don't know what to call it. They just do multiple crafts. Like maybe they sew things. They had some um, fleece blankets or placemats or other things. But guess what? They have mixed in there crocheted items. A lot of things like those towels, you know, that you hang over your stove with the crocheted tops to them, you know, so you can loop them through the, you know what I mean, right? I saw those in like three places. Three places I saw those. Um, I didn't see anybody with garments except the ones that I had. So. Mason Spring Fling. Didn't that already... Did my screen just go in and out? Ooh, or was that me? <laughs> Didn't they already have the spring fling in Mason Karen? Because I heard about that. And I thought it was like really close to what is happening? Is it flashing? I'm looking at the screen and I'm like, do 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 do. What is happening? Kitchen items, scarves, hair scrunchies, and reusable water balloons. I have never heard of reusable water balloons. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. It's during the retreat. Okay. I knew I'd looked into the Mason thing, and it was either right around the time of this one. I knew there was some reason I couldn't do the Mason event. I knew that, but I didn't remember why. But... I think I'm going to find one to do this summer and maybe one to do this fall and call it good, right? The lady that sold the books, she said she does about um, like four or five a year. And she normally only does them in the fall. So. No, my phone is not going dead. My phone is completely charged. I think it's lighting or something. Is it doing anything weird on you guys' end? I just look up at the screen every once in a while. It just looks like the light goes dim and comes back on. I'm like, woo, woo. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, maybe um, a summer one and a fall one. Maybe some different places. And see how they go. I mean, it's not super hard to set it up or anything. Like I said, it took about an hour. Do I want to invest in like more display type pieces? Do I, do I want to do that? Am I going to do this enough to up the game with display? Probably not, right? That's my thought. Probably not. Would it be worth it to invest in more stuff? I don't know. One more table so I can make a U shape. What I mean, I don't know. Do I have enough stuff to do that with? I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't know. But anyhow, that's enough talk about that. <laughs> that is enough talk about the craft thing, right? It's done. It's over. It happened. Didn't make much money. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> we move on. We move on. So. Hi, Jody. How is Jody? Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go if it's super, super hot, like not in the middle of July or anything. Mm. I want to go in the middle of July. Or August. A June one would be nice. Nope. No storms here. Nothing. Okay. Nothing weird for you. Okay. Yeah, I only saw it do it a couple times. It's just like the light. Maybe it was my light pad. I don't know. Maybe I did I wiggle it or do something? I don't know. It just looked like it got dim and then came back on. But it's all good. It's all good, right? 
Um, so tomorrow, you know, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow I'm going to a fiber festival with Angie. Uh, it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to get there. So I got to prepare, get up early and get ready to go. And drive down there. It's supposed to be nice weather here tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, Angie and I have been to this one before. I know that we have. Because we have been to this fairgrounds. And the other reason I know that we've been there is one of the buildings had a used book sale in it. And they had so many, so many used books. There were table after table, row after row. They filled like a whole barn, you know, like, you know, a fairgrounds barn, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they filled that thing with books. And they did have some other things like, I don't know, some videotapes and just different items. But um, I got an email from them or a text or something that the book sale was on. And they told me the dates of the book sale. And I got like a coupon for the book sale or something. And it, so it's the same place. The book sale is there again. But here's the thing that we're confused about. We're confused because when I was in East Lansing for the, um, the class with Tony, it came up. And fiber festivals came up. And I asked, because Tony's in Michigan, you know, and of course these other people are in Michigan because they're all coming to the class in Michigan, right? <laughs> At least I'm assuming they live in Michigan. If um, she'd heard of the Ann Arbor Fiber Festival. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she said, it's amazing. And I'm like, okay, I've heard that it's great. I'm like, is it like a full, full on fiber festival, you know, with, animals and everything and she's like oh yeah yeah they've got animals they've got you know they're spinning and there's all this stuff you can learn there and i'm like okay so i started looking into it and then i'm like angie i think that's when we, we already went to that one and when we went it was raining it was raining they had one yarn truck out front and you didn't even want it it was so wet and stuff you just wanted to get into the building. And that one building that had booths and the one building had the books. We didn't see any animals. It's at a fairgrounds. So, I mean, it's set up to where they could have, um, you know, where they could have animals and everything. And they're supposed to. So, Angie and I are a little confused. We're like, were there animals there? No animals. Are there going to be animals this time? Because the other one that we go to, which is up north of me, has all the stuff. It's got multiple buildings full of vendors. Um, they had all the animals. They had sheep. They had goats. They had bunnies. They had it all. One year we went, they had a herding dog demonstration. Um, they just had all kinds of stuff, you know? That one is something else. I mean, I think that one is pretty darn good. Um, but this one, we're very interested. Are there animals? And if there are animals, where are the animals? You know, it didn't seem to have animals last year. So we're going to go. We're going to go again. And we're going to check it out one more time and see if there's animals. And if there are, where the heck are they at? And where are other things like where are people spinning? Or there's supposed to be classes there too. Now we didn't sign up for any classes, but they're supposed to have some classes. So it sounds like it's a bigger deal than what we found when we went last year. So we're really curious. Did we just miss some stuff last year or what happened? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. We'll let you know. Okay, we'll let you know. It was the crowd, Brenda says. <laughs> it might have been the crowd, Brenda. <laughs> Bring a wagon, right? Bring a wagon, Sean. <laughs> well, luckily, luckily, you don't have to walk a long ways to get to this building where the books are. The parking lot's right out front. 
So it's not a long walk. We'll just go back to the car with the books. I think that's what we did last time. Because I know I bought books last time. I know that I did. That's why I got, well, we both did. That's why I got this text from them reminding me that the book sale is coming up, right? And when it is. So, yeah. I know. I got books last time, for sure. I did go to the bookstore, Brenda. I did. And I was disappointed at the bookstore. Yeah. I was disappointed at the bookstore. I'll just say, Barnes & Noble has never been like my favorite bookstore. It just isn't. Um, but that's, that's where I went because that's what was nearby. And I went and I looked around. And they had like a few tables that had buy one, get one half off. I'm at this table and I find this book. I'm like, oh, I like that book. I, I, I'll get that book. Let me find another one, you know, that's half off. Did they have another book on the half off? Oh, the one up north had the yurt, Brenda. Yeah, that was cool. That's what I'm saying. The one up north just has all kinds of cool stuff. And they had all kinds of food vendors. And they had every barn in the place was just filled with stuff. But it's not my week. You're right, Brenda. It's just not. <laughs> oh, some you win and some you lose. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Yeah, I did buy one book. I ended up buying one book at the bookstore. Um, but I just, nothing was, nothing was jumping off the shelves. Nothing was looking really good. Nothing was, you know what I mean? So, and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, get the deal on the buy one, get one half off. Because there wasn't another book on that table that I would have bought. <laughs> Even for half off, there was nothing I was interested in on that table. So I put the one I found away. I bought one book while I was there. One book. One lonely book. I don't know. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll find some books tomorrow at the used book sale. Yeah. At the used book sale. Wow. Uh, Got to find the right section. They do kind of a really good job at that used book sale of having things in like categories. You know what I mean? It's not like it's just random books everywhere. You have to paw through everything. You can kind of look for your, your favorite genre and shop by your genre. Genre. That's a fun word, isn't it? I like the word genre. <laughs> genre. I'm going to run out of these too. I have got to restock. Definitely. Okay, let's go to a different color. I don't want to do something I'm going to run out of and have to come back to it. I don't know why, but I don't want to do that. Hey, hello, static, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I've got... I've got lots of bags of spare drills. They're just over on the bookshelf, and I don't, I don't feel like going to get them right now. So we'll work on stuff that I've got plenty of in my containers. And then after I'm done with my live, I'll go over there and I'll grab a bunch of these and refill. Time to refill. So we'll do that. I don't need very many of these. Holy cow. What am I making? Am I making the cat? Can you guys tell what I'm making? It's upside down. I know the cat is right here. But I don't know if that's what I'm actually working on. Hard to tell. That was all of those. Goodness. Um, that's the cat's head. For sure. <laughs> that's the cat's head. The cat goes that way. That's part of the cat. This is not the cat. No. This is the cat. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it might be the cat. It could be cat. <laughs> oh, you know, Josh got that new couch. It is the cat. It's part of the cat. Okay. Uh, I thought so. Right down here, at least, is cat, right? Um, I could look at my picture. Let's look at my picture. What do we got? 
Yeah, like, uh, it's so hard to tell. Like, there's his ear. This is his cheek. In here is the nose. This is his mouth. There's, no? No, I think that's yarn. That's not his nose. That's yarn. <laughs> uh, Karen Hawkins. What is a Karen Hawkins? The Bookshop of Hidden Dreams. What is Karen Hawkins? I don't know Karen Hawkins. Do I know Karen Hawkins? I don't think so. It doesn't sound familiar to me. It doesn't sound familiar. All right. What else do we have that I can work on here? What do we have? What are those? H's. I need two H's. I can do that. I got those right here. Two H's and one alien. <laughs> oh, oh, who was in my book live? Or not my book live, the crochet live yesterday. I know that a few of you were in the crochet live yesterday. And do you remember when I said the wind caught the door out to the garage? slammed the door if you were here you remember it right it was it was loud loud bang the door slammed and i was like that sounded really bad like that didn't even sound like it normally does remember that anybody remember that the dub sisters okay well let me just say this i went out to the garage after the live and when I walked through the door, I was like, something is very wrong here. Something is very, very wrong. <laughs> I looked down like at the threshold. You know, we have steps on the other side of the garage door going down into the garage. There's stairs. And I was like, uh, why is there such a big gap here? There's a gap at like the threshold. And I was like, that is not normal. It's not supposed to be that way, is it? So I get Dale and I'm like, Dale, come here. Come look at this door. Not the door, but you know, the threshold. Come look at this. I'm like, there's a big gap here, like between the steps and the threshold and whatnot. I'm like, that's not right, is it? And he goes, no. And I'm like, well, let me tell you, because he wasn't here when that happened. Remember, he wasn't here. I said, let me tell you what happened. During my crochet live, there was a loud bang when the wind caught the door and slammed the door. And it sounded really weird. He said, you mean like something broke? And I'm like, yeah, kind of sounded like something broke. And he goes, well, it may not be broke, but it's moved. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's how we get the big gap, right? Yep. And so he's like, maybe I can just move it back. And later he comes in and he says, no, it's broke. He said, no, it's really messed up. He said, I'm, we're going to have to get a new door. And I'm like, what? Really? We had to get a new door? It's messed up that bad? And he goes, yep. <laughs> I was like, Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, it was really loud when that happened. And it didn't sound like the door just normally like slam and shut. Because I, yeah, I jumped. Yeah. Because it sounded so darn loud. Right. And it didn't sound like it normally does just when the wind catches it and it slams shut. No, it sounded different. Well, it's because. It really messed up the threshold. It's broke, folks. It's broke. <laughs> so apparently we're going to be getting us a new door, which is really going to stink because the outside of the door is painted the same teal green as the front door, which means whatever door we get, now we got to paint the door. I hope we still have some of the paint saved, you know. I think we do downstairs. I'm sure Dale probably saved some of it, whatever was left, so that we can match it. But 
man, what a pain. And I have to get a new door, take the door off. I'm certain, I don't know. I'm going to have to paint the one side at least. I don't know if it will come pre-painted on the other side and we can leave it white because it's just white in the garage. But it's definitely going to have to be painted to match the other door. Because that would look silly. They're both right there on the porch. To have one that would be white and one that's green. <laughs> that would be weird. So what a pain. I can't believe it broke though. I mean, I do believe it because I was sitting right here when it happened and I heard how loud it was. I believe it, but dang, right? It won't even shut properly. Like when I go out there now to try to close it, it won't even close properly. <laughs> I'm working on the hamster. Hamster's almost done. He needs ears. A hamster does not have ears. Yeah, so it's broke. Broken. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sherry, the book charmer, the Ella Dove stuff. Ah, no, Sherry, Dale can't fix it. <laughs> he said he can't fix it. He's like, no, it's messed up. I'm like, oh, great. Great. That's wonderful. So we've had a few things break lately. Like one of our drawers in the refrigerator broke. He was putting uh, orange juice or pop or something into, the, you know, you got the, like, I don't call, they're not drawers, but they're like shelves, shelves on the door, you know, like, you know what I mean? He was putting something away into one of those one day. And um, I heard a click. I'm like, oh, really? And I'm like, did it break? And he goes, uh, yep, sure did. And I'm like, oh, terrific. Okay, terrific. So he took that out. He broke it. He broke it. <laughs> he took it out and had to find um, places to put everything that was in that little shelf thing, you know. And I just asked him today. I said, are we going to try to order a new shelf for the refrigerator? A new, are they a shelf? I don't know if they are. Inside the door, you know. Um, are we going to order us a new one of those for the refrigerator? And he goes, why? What do we need it for? I said, well, it's nice to have that extra space. I mean, yeah, you've got other things now just in the refrigerator on the shelf in the refrigerator, but it's kind of crowded now. He goes, well, we probably should just get a new refrigerator. And I'm like, really? We need a new refrigerator? I mean, our refrigerator works. And he goes, yeah, but come here. He's like, uh, feel this? He said, see how hot that is? It shouldn't be hot. You shouldn't feel any heat there. And I'm like, okay, but do we need to replace it? And he goes, well, it probably means it's running all the time to be that hot. And I'm like, okay. He goes, what? You pay the electric bill. <laughs> like, well, you know how much refrigerators are? Refrigerators are ghastly expensive, right? I just, and we just got done paying income tax. I, I don't feel like getting a new I don't feel like getting a new refrigerator right now, you know? <laughs> Do we really, really, really need a refrigerator? I mean, I suppose it's better to get one before it dies than wait for it to die. I don't know. But my thought was, let's not get one until it's really broken, right? Right, Shannon? That's Dale's take. We can just make do without it. <laughs> we'll just make do without it. We broke one before. This is not the first time. I don't think those shelves are very sturdy. And I don't think, okay, I don't think the top one, the top one is not meant really to hold a two liter of pop, a big thing of orange juice, and a couple of water bottles. I don't 
think it's really supposed to hold all that stuff, although it does. I mean, it's deep enough and big enough. It's large enough to hold those items, but should it hold all of those heavy items? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Dale is spending money like crazy lately, Deborah. He's wanting to spend more. They're not. Su they're supposed to be for produce. You put your wait. What are the drawers at the bottom for then, Sean? I thought the produce and the meats and the cheeses go in the bottom drawers. What goes in those then? I mean, and how would produce stay in those? I mean, they only have like a little lip about what a couple inches tall. They don't hold much that way, do they? I don't know. Hmm. We should go watch some refrigerator refrigerator organization or something. How do you organize your refrigerator? What should go where? What is the proper way to do it? <laughs> oh, I'm not going there with Dale. I, I'm not going there with Dale because he is already, um, what's her name? Uh, Martha Stewart. He's already a Martha Stewart. Let me tell you. I can't put the sheets on the bed right. I can't put the sheets on the bed right. No. Nope. Um, they have to be a certain way. Like, um, oh, do I have these? I have these. I have a few of these. Let's do these. The top sheet. The top sheet has to be a certain way because that's how Martha Stewart said to do it. I'm like, what? What? It has to do with the seam. The seam, you know, he wants it one way. I like it the other way. It's like the old like argument about the toilet paper. You know, which way to put the toilet paper on the roll? Which way to put the sheet on the bed? Apparently. I don't know. If I started researching how to, how are you supposed to put things in your refrigerator? Oh boy. Oh boy. You know, that would be a whole nother can of worms. I'm not saying you put the worms in the refrigerator, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think I want to go there with him. Dale, this is how the refrigerator should technically be. <laughs> right? Well. I'm going to consult Martha Stewart. I can hear it now. No, we're not asking Martha Stewart. Sorry, we're not. Martha can make her sheets and her refrigerator any way she wants them to be, but I don't want mine that way just because Martha said so. <laughs> Who's Martha, anyhow? <laughs> Who is Martha, anyhow? Keeps the produce away from the cold, cold, and doesn't weigh down the door, causing them to shift on the, the door shift on the hinges. We just broke the shelf. We didn't shift the door. We just broke the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. You know. Well, that's my life. And then, okay, we got new furniture for our patio, for our it's not a patio. It's a, oh man, I had those. I did some right here and there's four more right there. See, are you kidding me? No, not kidding me. Oh, look, there's one right there in my tray stove. I'll put that one over there and then I'll only need three. Come on, flip over the right way. I can't get you that way. Thank you. There, go over here. I need three. Perfect. Um, Got that new patio furniture, right? And it was not cheap. I mean, patio furniture is not cheap. So he got the patio furniture. And then we got home with it. And he goes, man, he said, I forgot to pick up a new grill. I'm like, uh, okay, a new grill. He goes, yeah, look at it. He takes me over there to it. And he goes, look at that back wheel. And I'm like, uh, okay, yep, it doesn't look all that great. He goes, oh, back wheel is going to fall off. He said, the grates inside are starting to get all crappy and, uh, yep, it's time for a new grill. I should have picked up a new grill. And I'm like, uh, well, okay, I suppose you could go back and get one if you want. Then he was getting rid of a bunch of scrap metal. The neighbors had a bunch of scrap metal stuff and they had a little pile out there. And he took it all in the other day. 
you got rid of it. You know, you get some money for it. You don't get a lot of money for it anymore because it's just not worth much anymore. It used to be a little more lucrative business selling scrap metal, but it's not worth much right now. So um, he comes back from that and we're sitting out on the patio on the deck there. And he looks over at the grill and he goes, dang it. He said, I should have taken the grill to scrap. And I'm like, oh, I said, but we don't have a new grill. Don't you think we should get a new grill before you take the old grill to scrap? I mean, you guys, I'm going to be gone tomorrow for a good part of the day. I am not going to be surprised if I come home and there's just like a new grill sitting out on the deck. You know? Um, and if it doesn't happen tomorrow, uh, I'm going to just predict, I'm going to predict that it happens sometime next week. because. He has got this itch. He just has this itch. He doesn't want to put any more into the grill. He's already replaced things, replaced burners, replaced the grids, things like that. And he's like, you know, the life of a grill, it's only a few years. I'm like, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, it's your money, buddy. It is your money. And if that's how you want to spend it, you go spend it. Go get a new grill. But just get a new grill before you scrap out the old one. That would be my one suggestion. Don't get rid of it until you get a new one, right? So, yeah, put all their condiments and drinks in the door. The door sags and then becomes inefficient. Huh. Well, but would you know if it's sagging and inefficient? I mean, if it still closes, that doesn't mean it's not right. It, does that mean it could still be wrong? Could that have something to do with why it's getting too hot? Because it gets hot between the two doors. It's hot right there between the two doors. Does that mean, is it not working properly because the door has sagged? Is Dale right, Sean? Do we need a new refrigerator? Do we need to spend over $1,000 to get a new refrigerator? Do we? Is that what you're saying? Could ours be compromised? Please don't tell him that you said this to me. <laughs> I, you know, so this is what I'm not doing. I'll tell you what I'm not doing. I have a Lowe's card, a Lowe's credit card, and I have a Menards credit card. I am not, not putting a refrigerator on either one of those credit cards. I have paid them off. And when we put stuff on those credit cards, those credit cards are in my name. And you know who's paying on those credit cards. So I bought stuff for this house. I bought stuff for the other house. And it's gone on my Lowe's or my Menards credit card. And I don't, I'm not putting anything on it again. I am not. I only have one credit card that has a balance on it. And I'm trying to get rid of that one as well. I'm not going to put anything on credit. So if we're getting a new refrigerator, Dale's going to have to figure that one out. Yep, he's going to have to figure that one out because I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So we might have all kinds of new stuff around here. A new door, a new grill, a new refrigerator. Let's see. What else can we get? <laughs> what else can we get new? I'm certain we need something else. Hey, Dale. Hey, Dale. We need, um, um, <laughs> let me make a list. Let me make a list. Yeah, Dale, Dale's got his own credit cards. He's got credit cards. He doesn't have credit cards at the, like, home improvement stores. But he's got a Chase credit card and stuff. He, you know, he could do that if he wanted to. He could. Um, Willie? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, you can get things like interest free at the home improvement store or whatever. A year to 18 months without paying interest, things like that. But no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not volunteering. I'll just say that. I am not going to say, oh, sure. We could put it on the blah, blah card and, 
you know, not have to pay interest for 18 months or whatnot or, or Menards, you know, Menards get you because, um, they'll give you like, you can get money back, you know, whatnot sometimes I'm like, mm, yeah, tempting, tempting, but no, no. It's not okay. I just had that out and I needed it. Seriously, I need one eight. I need my hamster's eyeball right here. Boom, hamster. He had most of his eyeball over here. He didn't have his eyeball over here though. Now his eyes are complete. He still has no ears though. I need that X. <laughs> Definitely need the X refilled because that's his ears and all that's the X. And I need, I can do this one. I only got a few minutes left. Um, you get a brand new grill at Walmart every year, $45 grill. Yeah. Don't I wish that we were getting a $45 grill? No. Don't I wish. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Martha wants Dale to replace. Everything in the kitchen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. The door sagged and caused the seal to not be in the proper sealing position. Is that your analysis of my refrigerator, Sean? Is that what happened to mine? Is that what you're saying? Should we get a refrigerator that has like the computer on the door and the screen and, you know, all that kind of stuff? Should we get that kind of a refrigerator? Do you know how much those things are? You can spend anywhere from a few hundred dollars, several hundred dollars, to, I mean, how much can you spend on a refrigerator? Seriously, how much can you spend on a refrigerator? You can spend so much money on a refrigerator. I just want one that looks good. And, I mean, it has, here's the thing. I don't know about you guys. But our refrigerator has to fit into a certain size space, top and bottom, you know, because it's boxed right in. There's cupboards beside it, cupboards above it. You know, it's like a built in refrigerator and you have to make sure that the refrigerator fits those specs or it's not going to fit. We did get a new stove. We had the same thing with that. You have to make sure that the stove fits these specific dimensions or it's not going to fit because, you know, there's cabinets everywhere. You know, the refrigerator goes right up against the wall. And then there's a cabinet beside it, a cabinet above it. Mm -hmm. So when you go refrigerator shopping, you can't just go look at you know, what one you like and what's pretty or, you know, you got to be more specific than that. A lot of measuring, lots of measuring, figure out what's going to fit. Oh, goodness. Oh, that was your refrigerator? <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> You're not certified to diagnose refrigerator problems? Why not, Sean? Why not? Okay, I don't want that there either because they're hooked together. They are hooked together. No. Get out of there. Come out. So we might be laying down some cash or something or refrigerators and grills and doors and I don't know what else. I'm done. I don't want to spend no more money. So today, when I was uh, getting the table out from downstairs, I had to empty the table off. One, it was when we got back. And I was trying to set the table back up to put things back on the table, like diamond paintings on the table and things like that. And I asked Dale to help me take care of a few, like, Rubbermaid totes that went up high on the shelf and, you know, things like that. And he's just looking around and he's like, I said, I need to move these paintings and put them back on the table. These are the ones I'm still trying to sell. I'm going to do it when I get back from the retreat. Back from the retreat? Why do you got to wait until then? 
I said, because I don't want to deal with shipping and all that kind of stuff until after the retreat. You know, I'll have more time on my hands. And then he just looks around. And he goes, I don't know why you're hanging on to all of these. <laughs> Here we go again. I don't know why you're hanging on to all of these. He said, it's looking like a warehouse in here. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't say anything. What can I say? I, you know, let me sell the ones that I have pulled out first. Let me do that, okay? Let me, he is not rich, Sue. Definitely not rich. I will say that. <laughs> um, let me sell the ones that I have pulled out first before I start going through any more. You know what I'm saying? To see if there's more I want to sell. Let me sell what I have out and about first. Then I can go through everything again. I've already went through Diamond Art Club. I pretty much pulled out all the Diamond Art Club. I need to pull all the Dreamer designs off the shelf. First of all, there's no room for them. They've outgrown their shelf. And I'm guessing there's stuff in the Dreamer designs that I probably wouldn't be in love with right now that I might sell. So, and I never did do a stash video for Dreamer Designs. So, it would be a fun little um, endeavor, I think, to get out all the Dreamer Designs and go through them all, do a video, show everybody what I got, and then pull out some to sell. But, that being said, that's a lot of work. And I'm not up to doing that right now. No. No. I will be buying more plants, Paula, for sure. Yes, because I will be buying flowers for my pots and all that kind of stuff. Yes, absolutely. And so the nice thing is Dale and I kind of, uh, we share the responsibility with that. Like sometimes we go somewhere and he'll foot the bill and he'll buy some. And sometimes I go and I buy some. So it's kind of like, you know, we kind of, share that and it's not like he's not the one that's into the flowers but he'll buy them you know he'll buy them and sometimes i buy them just depends so so many have been archived and can't be replaced well you know i had some craftables out that i was going to sell and i put them right back on the shelf <laughs> Just because they're craftables, you'll never be able to get them again. You'll never be able to get those again. So I put them right back on my shelf. And I was like, nope, I'm hanging on to those now. Dreamer Designs, I don't know about. Diamond Art Club, I don't know. I, I did pull off several Diamond Art Clubs. But, and honestly, you know, when I was getting sneak peeks, I wouldn't say I loved everything I got as a sneak peek, you know? So there's definitely some of that that um, I pulled off the shelf to sell. Some I kept because I liked them. Hi, Lisa. But I'm not, I'm not going through Diamond Art Club anytime soon. Sell all the paintings and get a new refrigerator. There you go, Deborah. We could get that three or four or five thousand dollar one or however much it costs, you know, that has the TV screen and you can make your list. It, it's online, you know, connects to Wi Fi and everything. So I'm down to two colors here. Well, except for those guys. Like I said, I had three of those to go. And then I need more X's and more of the. I call him a little person. I think he looks like a person. I don't know what you guys call it, but I think it looks like a person. Anyhow. Well, a dog's whining. Dale's clearly not inside. Um, he might be trying to get the chickens and the ducks in. You have not received... Oh, my goodness. that That's crazy, Sherry. That you haven't gotten that yet. Is that, what, two weeks old now? It's crazy. I don't know what's going on there. 
I really don't know what's going on there. Diamond Art Club is, um, they're helping me out though. They're helping me out because they are having nothing Mindy wants. <laughs> so they're helping me out. But that means I don't have stuff to show you guys either, but they're helping me out. I haven't bought since, well, the little dachshund puppy in the shoe, the little doggy in the shoe. So, and I haven't, I mean, if I've ordered three this year from Diamond Art Club, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look, but I don't think it's much more than that. Maybe three. It's hard to remember, but anyhow. Yep. I am purchaseless for this Saturday. Purchase nothing. Purchase nothing. And I didn't purchase anything last week, did I? No. Like it was the week before. I got the little farm girl from Dreamer Designs. Yes. So there's that. All right, folks. I'm going to get off here and I'm going to go take care of this dog who probably wants to go outside or have some water or something. And I'm definitely finishing this. I might try to put together a video. I have so many clips for a crafty vlog and a farm video. That's going to be coming up because I have tons of stuff I've been recording for both of those. So those might both be fairly lengthy too. I, I mean, I haven't put them in my editor to see how much time I have on them or anything, but they might be, um, they might be kind of long. I got a lot of good stuff there. I just keep filming everything I do. Everywhere I go, I just pull out my phone and I'm just filming stuff. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I'm going to let you guys go and go take care of this dog and see what Dale's up to. Like I said, the ducks have been giving him a hard time going in. So he comes in and he's like, nope, they're not in. He said some of them are in and the others wouldn't come in. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I'll get them. Don't worry. And then I go out and they go right in. <laughs> he's not patient. He wants them in like now and he won't even wait. You got to wait for him. You got to wait him out a little. I'll get him. I'll get him in. Okay. All right. I'm going to let you guys go and I will see you later. And um, of course, I'll take some video from the Fiber Festival tomorrow. And hopefully, we find some animals. And Shannon, wait till you see the books. Oh, wait till you see the books. <laughs> you, hey, you could come down. You're in Michigan. You could come down. It's a huge, huge, huge book thing. Yeah, look it up Ann Arbor Fiber Festival. You'll find it. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.